Okay, I see by the uh, my watch that it is uh, three o'clock. A call to order the board of directors regular meeting study session. Could I have a roll call, please? Director Grasha. Here. Director Sewell. Here. Vice President Wright. Here. President Martin. Here. Thank you. We have quorum. Rules of procedure, Counselor. I'm used to looking at him over here. Right? According to the rules of procedure adopted by the board, all notice meetings are conducted using Rosenberg's rules of order as a procedural guideline. Directors should refrain from responding directly to public comments at meetings of the board. The president of the board presides at all meetings and decides all points of order and procedure during meetings. The president is responsible for maintenance of order and decorum at all board meetings. No person should be allowed to speak who has not first been recognized by the president. No member of the board should speak more than once upon any one subject until every other member of the board wishing to speak on that subject shall have been given an opportunity to speak. No board member shall interfere with the orderly progress of a board meeting, and the board president regulates the amount of time to be dedicated to a particular agenda item. Next item, item five, public input. This is the opportunity for members of the public to address the board on matters within the board's jurisdiction. Please limit comments to three minutes or less. State law prohibits the board from discussing or taking action on any item not listed on the agenda. Do we have any members of the public wishing to address the board? President Martin, there is no public comment. Okay. I understand we're gonna do the human resources report on Monday? Yes. Okay. Okay. Moving on to item seven, Board of Directors vacancy. Uh, let me start off by uh, saying that uh, that uh, giving a rundown of the of the procedure. We had a, a board member who resigned effective August sixteenth. Uh, we therefore uh, wanted to reach out and and uh, identify applicants who were interested in filling that seat and um, hold on here a second. And uh, we posted the uh, notice advising people of the vacancy and our intent to appoint. Um, one notice was posted at Desert uh, Hot Springs City Hall. Another notice was posted at Desert Hot Springs Library. And the third notice was um, placed outside the Mission Springs Water District offices. I understand that my, my recollection was we also discussed this in uh, general terms during uh, one of the one of the board members at about that same same or board meetings. I mean, at, at about the same time. So, um, having said that, we had a deadline for submitting an application of August thirty first. And to date, we have one applicant who applied for the position. Do we have any members of the public who've reached out to us that uh, did not uh, fill out an original application who would now wish to be considered? President Martin, we did not. Okay. With that in mind, hmm, uh, as I said, Mr. President, I, I'd like to make the motion that we uh, bring to the table, the appointment of uh, Mr. Griffith and uh, discuss, uh, perhaps discuss why uh, I'd like to. I can just barely hear you, Steve. Can you speak into the microphone or something? Uh, I'm sorry. I, 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 know, I know you have troubles there. Maybe you could turn up your uh, volume. I'd like to uh, bring to the table uh, consideration of nomination of Mr. Griffith. Yes, uh, I will allow you to make that determination after we finish the interview uh, of the applicant for the for the general public's information, so that they know who we're appointing. We want to get give the general public uh, 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 the background. Yeah, I so, thought. Okay, good. All right. Okay. So I was going over your resume, and it's a very impressive resume, Mr. Griffith. Uh, your your um, your experience in the business community your um, um, 
management level at uh, various hospitals throughout uh, the period of years and 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 uh, and and the like. And uh, what I would like to now do, if it's all right, unless anybody has questions about that portion of his resume, do we all have copies of the resume? In the back. Okay. Yes. Um, what I'd like to do is to focus on the volunteer civic portion of your resume. Would you please uh, go over all of the different things you've done representing uh, the city of Desert Hot Springs and the community at large? Uh, sure, I don't have it in front of me, so if I forget something, um, <laughs> I'll let you know. <laughs> uh, so I uh, have uh, done a lot in the community. Um, some of it has been minor. Uh, in the past, I also I have worked for the Palm Springs International Film Festival. I did that every year uh, in the transportation department. I did uh, volunteer sh for a short while at Kittyland. Um, Cat Rescue. Um, prior to that, actually up in Fresno, I volunteered a little bit at the Valley um, Animal Center, which is another animal rescue. I'm, anyone knows me knows I like animals. Um, and I apologize because I forgot my glasses, so I can't even see anything. Um, I did, um, I was on the planning commission. Um, I was also on city council. I was president of the Desert Hot Springs Hoteliers Association. Um, currently president of the Desert Hot Springs Historical Society and um, was again on the planning commission and I resigned that last January. And you were chairman of the planning commission, as I recall, is that correct? I was. And you were also mayor pro tem sitting on the city council. Yes, I was. Okay, that's quite, quite impressive. Are there any questions from the, from the, from the board? No, no, I think um, I think I know him. So, <laughs> Ivan, any yeah, I think everything kind of speaks for itself. Yeah. I've uh, seen Mr. Griffin around volunteering and being a part of the community for quite some time, and um, I'm a little disappointed that we didn't have more candidates. But uh, I'm not disappointed in the candidate we have. So, good point. I think I'm. Uh, you know, on that. I think his experience with city council, he'd make uh, a great uh, director on our board. Okay, do you have any other comments you'd like to make before we uh, make a decision on this? No, I'm I'm uh, I'm a little relieved. I don't have a lot of competition here. So, uh, <laughs> I'm not any I'm a little less nervous. I'm still a little nervous in the process, but um makes me breathe a little easier. Okay. Oh, and yeah, there are there are four directors president present Mr. President. Perhaps you would uh, acknowledge uh, Director Grasha. Yes, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Do you have any questions or comments you'd like to make? Yeah, uh, I just want to say I've, I've observed uh, Robert over his time as uh, I watched every one of his planning commission meetings. I've also watched every uh, city council meeting that he, while he served there. Uh, politics is a rough business and you got to work hard to to succeed at it and I, I don't hold it against you that you weren't successful when you were re-elected because I know just how uh, uh, you know awful uh, campaigning can be so like I say um, you campaign like a gentleman you made some strategic errors that I hope you won't uh, make when you're appointed to this board and that is to uh, keep a, a open uh, lines of communications with all uh, constituents and not just in the bubble that you uh, to circulate in uh, now. Um, I think you would have been successful had you done that when you were on the city council. So having said that, I want to welcome you to this board and to uh, water management here in the Coachella Valley. It's a uh, responsibility that uh, I, I hope you'll take serious and, uh, and know uh, that uh, uh, it's, it, <laughs> It, it, there's a lot to uh, deal with here, and uh, I'm looking forward to working with you and developing a working relationship going forward. As I leave this board myself, uh, there will be a new uh, director coming on behind me. We don't know who that will be. There's another candidate running in another division. You could actually have a complete uh, change in uh, 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 scope here in the next few weeks. And so just keep an open mind to uh, uh, opposing viewpoints and uh, I think you'll do great. And uh, with that, I'd like to make a motion that we appoint uh, Mr. Robert Griffith 
to the seat vacated uh, by the uh, former board member. Okay, do I have a second? I'll second. Oh, wait a minute. I'll, I'll second. Okay, and we have a motion and a second. Could have a roll call vote, please. Director Grasha? Yes. Director Sewell? Yes. Vice President Wright? Aye. President Martin? Yes. Congratulations, Mr. Griffith. Motion, motion passes. Yes, yeah. congratulations. Thank you. Now, move over to your seat at the desk. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. We got to do that first. Yeah. Yeah. At this point, we need to uh, to swear in Mr. Griffith uh, for his term in office, for his term in office. So. All right. I was told by Dora that I needed to be sure that I was close enough to the uh, uh, microphone. Okay. Please raise your hand and repeat after me. Uh, I do solemnly swear, more firm, that I will support and defend. I do sol solemnly swear that I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California. Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California. To the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California. That I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. That I could take you this, that I take this obligation, obligation freely, freely. Freely and without any mental reservation or purpose. Purpose of evasion. Of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties upon which I am about to enter. The duties upon which I am about to enter. Congratulations, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, now if you kindly take your seat over here between Nancy and I. Moving on to um, item eight, which is uh, the affiliation list update. The only one we're going to update is the one that were the vacancies that were created by uh, the resignation of the previous board member. So if you'll turn to, uh, you know, I don't, I don't see it. There should be a flyer in there under item eight. Go to the next page. Uh, what are you looking for, Russ? This, no. I got I, the affiliations. Yeah. yeah, anyway, these are the 2022 committees, and I'll give you this when we're done. There's, um, normally, we, what we do is we, uh, uh, every December, we um, select chairperson and members of the various committees serving in the Mission Springs Water District. Um, and uh, there are two. There you go. There are two um, vacancies. One is the uh, member of the Committee for Human Relations, and the other one is chair of the Public Affairs things. Those will be the two that you'll be in charge of or involved with moving forward. And then in December, uh, we may uh, re review everybody's uh, assignment and, and uh, and maybe make changes if, 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 if necessary. You'll also see on there a list of our affiliate lists. And uh, Dory, this gets kind of a lengthy, uh, but Dory can go over that and explain the differences between the conferences, meetings, and workshops that are com compensable and the informational meetings that are non compensable and the voting delegates, all that uh, information with you separately. Bear in mind that you'll um, receive compensation for attending the meetings that are approved up at the, and the conferences that are approved up here to be compensable, except you'll only be paid for one of them during one day. Per diem. Per diem, excuse me, yeah. So if you happen to have, they, and sometimes they'll fall, two of them will fall on the same day, but you only get paid for one, but uh, we're not in it for the big bucks, so. <laughs> 
Okay. So uh, moving on to item nine, resolution. Point, point of order, Mr. President. Yes, what is it? Um, can I recommend that uh, that the board uh, appoint uh, Mr. Griffith as the uh, uh, delegate, if you will, to the Desert Water Agency? Uh, if I'm elected, uh, I would really look forward to working with uh, Robert uh, uh, while, I, uh, while I serve on the board over there. It'd be good to have a fresh uh, face over there that doesn't uh, um, carry with it the uh, baggage that some members of this board would carry. And uh, I would look forward to having someone that uh, we could interact with on a positive level. And I think uh, Mr. Griffith fills that bill well. And I would ask that you appoint him to be uh, that uh, person. Yes, he, all of the all of the uh, the assignments that uh, a previous uh, board member had will be uh, taken over by by Robert Griffith. Uh, that includes the Desert Water Agency. Um, assignment, and um, I don't believe that requires a CBWD too. By the way. Yeah, CBWD, all of them. I don't have them all right here listed that specific ones, uh, but everything that he was assigned to do, that would be your responsibility. And then we'll reevaluate that come December for everybody. So, um, okay, moving on. Uh, resolute number item number nine resolution 2022 24 a resolution of the board of directors of the mission springs water district proclaiming a local emergency persists re-ratifying the um re-ratifying the um proclamation of the state of emergency by executive order uh and as in nora dash zero nine dash twenty one and reauthorizing remote teleconference meetings of the legislative bodies of the Mission Springs Water District for the period September 22nd, 2022 through October 22nd, 2022, pursuant to provisions of the Ralph M. Brown Act. Um, I don't think that that requires any additional uh, explanation on there. Does anybody have any questions or comments concerning item nine? I just have a comment. Okay. Um, I is the emergency still going on or, or has the governor declared it's over because the state offices, there's no, the, the emergency is gone for the state offices. Um, they don't, they can either come to work. They don't, there's, there's some rules and regulations now about, you know, working at home. But from what I've been told, it's, there is no. Emergency well, there's anymore. the California Department of Public Health still, and I checked it today before the board meeting, still recommends masking. Uh, as a precautionary measure for COVID, um, you know, right now we're in a period where thing where it appears to be a lull and a decline in the number of COVID cases, but that can change. Um, and what this does is this resolution allows you or a board member that might get COVID but want to attend or have family members with COVID and want to attend a meeting. It allows them to do it remotely uh, without posting their address at the, uh, on the agenda. That they'll be attending from and without the necessity of them posting the agenda at their residence and allowing members of the public to attend from that remote location so it gives you some flexibility to continue to allow board members to meet remotely if they desire to do so and it's based on the cdc's state of emergency well it's also based on in the resolution sorry sorry Lyle. yeah wow it wow AB 361 runs through January of 2024. Okay, so it's still AB 361 is still in effect. And in the resolution that you're adopting, you're laying the groundwork that allows you to continue to do this. Yeah, I know what we're doing here. I just wanted to know if what we thought because uh, the governor has lifted emergency measures in the state offices. And under AB 361, it can be a determination either at the state level or at the local level. And what this resolution does is makes a finding that there's still cause to meet remotely if needed. Okay, moving on to uh, any other questions or comments? Okay, moving on to item 10, California Special Districts Association 2023 Committee and Expert Team Participation. 
Um, California Special District Association is a, a, a very worthwhile organization to belong to and, and be involved in. There are a number of committees um, that are listed uh, in your agenda in item, um, item 10. And what I suggest you do is to take a look at that uh, over the weekend. And then on Monday, if you so choose to be considered for appointment or election to uh, any of these uh, various committees, um, that would be the time to state your, your interest on, on Monday. Any questions or comments on that item? OK. Moving on to item 11. Professional services contract with TKE Engineering for Civil Engineering and Roadway Design Services on Avenue 19, Avenue 20, and Little Morongo Road. It is recommended to approve the scope of work and proposed agreement and authorize the general manager to award an agreement with TKE Engineering Incorporated for Civil Engineering and Roadway Design Services on Avenue 19, Avenue 20, and Little Morongo Road in the not to uh, uh, not to exceed amount of two hundred ninety six thousand eight hundred and eighty six dollars. Um, General Manager Wallen. Thank you, um, President Martin. Uh, and as most of you know, um, we've um, quite a ways into the construction of our sixty eight million or seventy million dollar approximate uh, ex, you know re regional plant, but. You know, if you were at the at the the uh, groundbreaking, et cetera, if you've been out there like we have, that the roads to that facility are um, basically non-existent almost. And so, well, because of the rain. Well, no, 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 no. It's not. This is not with it. We just need to make those improvements. And uh, Brian will go into the process that we have. Um, we basically are doing this because we do need to you know we do need access to that plant and the emergency vehicles need access to that plant so i'm gonna let brian explain to you the process we okay. went through and to design and and um and uh, make the improvements to those roads thank you general manager president martin members of the board uh yes um as you know uh, as general manager Willem stated that the facility is under construction uh, and the road around that facility right now is simply on its, its dirt path at best. Uh, so therefore, on June 2nd, MSWD staff solicited proposals for consulting engineering uh, design services for the design of 19th, 20th, and Little Morongo Road around the site. Um, we, re we received seven proposals through a request for qualification process. Uh, staff reviewed those seven proposals and deemed that the best qualified and best respondent was TKE Engineering. Uh, included in your packet is their proposal, their cost proposal, and the contract uh, for professional uh, services. If there's any questions, I can answer those right now. Any questions from the board? Nancy? No. Bob? Ivan? Um, Steve? I'm, uh, can you hear me? I'm lost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm lost okay good there you are i was trying to look for the uh, agenda packet or the uh, item so you went out to bid uh for a bunch is this is not the construction is tell me tell fill me in i could i couldn't find my agenda that part of it in my agenda package and that's why i was lost here on my computer screen so is this is just for the engineering part of it right correct this is for the engineering of the roadway around the site and uh you mentioned three streets. Uh, that sounds like a lot. It, what? No, oh, thank you. Huh, good. All right. Uh, so 19th, this punches 19th through to Little Morongo and then all the way around down 20th. Now, is there any way that county is going to get involved in helping with this since uh, they're going to have such a huge... Uh, positive impact from the new uh, facility that's going in there and basically uh, going to benefit from this construction. It feels like we're going to end up uh, footing the bill for a lot of infrastructure that's going to benefit uh, our new uh, partner. And I, I'd like to hear you uh, 
expound upon how that's not the case and how uh, they've agreed to pay for all of the uh, pavement work, but we're just going to pay for the engineering. I'm hoping that's what you're going to say, but uh, somehow I doubt it. Go ahead. No, thank you, Director Grasha. Actually, uh, as it stands now, the city looks at us as a developer, if you will, of this area. Therefore, we were required to provide uh, the pavement and water and sewer as we would as any developer would. So you notice on 20th where we start, that is next to the Viento project where Viento will stop. Now there are conditions of approval that overlap in some of these areas and we will be working with the city to make sure that you know the road is properly installed, construction and the proper people are paying for it or any matched funds. For example, the 20th again, I believe the uh, Viento project is required to take that road all the way to Little Morongo. So we're gonna be working with uh, the Viento project in that particular area. We're also picking up the road on 18th, which has been conditioned by, I believe, two different owners to bring the, the, the road to that location as well. Little Morongo, technically, we're only supposed to have to do our side of the street plus 12 feet past that, which doesn't include curb and gutter and things of that nature. So we're working with the city to do what we would, what any developer would be required to do to develop a site. So we're, we are, it's not our intent to overpay or to build more than we are absolutely necessary. Okay, now, so Little Morongo is only gonna get paved halfway across the street. I guess is what you're just telling me a 20th as well, but 19th that's going to get paved on both sides or we that goes through our property. Those are our solar panels. Isn't that right? Absolutely. Yes. The north of a 19 is a well site as well as the solar panels. And so the entrance and exit to our facility is going to be on what little Morongo or 19. It is actually on little Morongo. Okay. So that'll be paved on both sides. So, uh, that is what you said, right? Yes. Okay. And I apologize. The well no, site is actually okay. on the south I, side of 19th and the solar panels are to the north. So right. we're, it's going right between those two two pieces of property and then a continuing south along Little Morongo. I'm sorry, right. go ahead. Well, the, uh, it's all good news. I, I, I'm, I'm just, uh, you know, th this is, um, probably millions of dollars by the time you're done. Is, is it possible that this uh, goes into the uh, uh, grant or is this something that's not part? Gonna, I don't know, did you get this in under the wire with them or, or are we gonna have to pay for this? We are going to unfortunately have to pay for the road improvements. It wasn't part of the original CEQA documents and things of that nature, the environmental clearances that were required for the grant. So it is going to fall squarely on our shoulders for this. Right construction that that what was an assumption i made i should never make assumptions but that that one seemed like one that was uh, pretty safe <clears throat> all right uh, thank you and with that i'll um, wait till monday to make the motion and let, i guess other people will have questions but th thanks for helping out there okay any other questions okay moving on to discussion items item 12 Mission Springs Water District Regional Water Reclamation Facility update. Pardon? I'm going to have Steve give you the uh, status report of okay. our plant. All right. Uh, good afternoon, Director Martin and members of the board. Um, I'm going to give you a quick verbal update and then run through a PowerPoint presentation showing some photos of the current construction process. Yeah. Um, for the Regional Water Reclamation Facility project, the final funding agreement is back with the state. Um, the district called a special board meeting last month and approved the final funding agreement with the state for $68 million in grant towards the Regional Water Reclamation Facility project. That includes the treatment plant, mm -hmm. the conveyance line to bring flows to the treatment plant, and the area into septic to sewer collection system. Um, following, we got the wet sign signatures from both legal counsel and the general manager and um, sent those to the state. The state will go through a final review of that agreement, make sure we didn't make any changes to it, and then it will go to the deputy director to execute. Uh, once the deputy director executes the agreement, we'll be eligible to start the reimbursement process. Um, the, grant, uh, um, the grant agreement stipulates that within the first 90 days of executing the agreement, Mission Springs submits the first reimbursement request. And if you recall, they've already allowed Mission Springs to seek reimbursement for costs associated with the project all the way back to October of 2021. 
Um, so all costs incurred to date are going to be eligible for reimbursement. And we'll be working over the next three months um, or once we get that final agreement, but we're gonna be getting all that up to date and get that back uh, for Mission Springs. Um, regarding the conveyance line projects, um, again, this is the force main and gravity sewer that will bring flows to the treatment plant. That project was put out to bid at the end of July. We've completed the um, pre-proposal or pre-bid job walk with prospective contractors. I believe we had eight contractors at that pre-bid job walk and the bid opening is scheduled for tomorrow afternoon at 2 p.m. Um, in addition for the area M2 sewer, um, the final design on that is getting closer to completion. Right now we're working with the County of Riverside to discuss what options we have with regard to pavement repair. Um, typically it's cheaper if we can partner with someone like the city or county, depending on whose jurisdiction it falls under, to not just go in and do the trench cuts within the pavement, but be able to go in and, and um, pulverize the full street and then um, complete the pipeline improvements and then repave the entire street and just cost share on the cost for the final paving. Um, so right now we're working with the county. They are going to be doing some work on bubbling wells. Um, so at a minimum, we'll be able to partner for a portion of the project on that pavement cost. Mm -hmm. And we're working with them on other options to um, related to cost for pavement. Um, and with that, I will give a short presentation, uh, visual update. Bear with me. Okay, um, so first things first, um, this is a, a photo basically following last month's board meeting of the SBR tanks. Um, and this is showing the completion of the slabs on grade for the SBR tanks. Um, and you'll see kind of off to the right hand side of the screen that they're beginning to put in the rebar for the walls for the tanks. Um, these tanks are roughly 20 feet wide by 130 feet long and they'll be about 24 feet deep. And that's where all the main treatment process takes place. There's four tanks um, that we're looking at. Um, the structure in front of you is the plant drain pump station. Um, that's about 34 feet deep. And following completion of the forming and pouring of that facility, um, they did a water test, a water leak down test. You'll see it being filled up with water on the left-hand side of the screen. And then following completion of that and it passing the leakage test, they started backfilling um, the bottom around the plant drain pump station. Um, the next several slides I'll show you are the SBR tank walls uh, as they're in progress. Um, this one shows the large forms that are being moved into place to help form up the walls, the vertical walls for the tanks. Um, again, this one shows the rebar mats that have already been put into place. Um, these walls, these vertical walls are around 18 inches to 24 inches in width and again, about 20 to 24 feet in height. Um, here you can see the rebar crews um, tying in the different rebar mats for the vertical walls. Um, here's another photo. You can see a, another large wall mat of the rebar being moved into place. Um, there's about 70 different conduits that go through that bottom slab uh, that we showed you to each of the four treatment tanks that really control the different processes for the water, the different pumps, the different aerators and whatnot. Um, and this is the conduit sweep that goes down and into the bottom of that slab that the construction crews affectionately referred to as the quote unquote mega sweep. Um, it's a pretty, pretty neat facility going in. Um, and the little snapshot on the left hand side of your screen is that where it ducks down underground and goes into the bottom slab. All the conduits in the slab have already been placed, and this is just connecting those and bringing them up to the surface to connect to the main um, building. Can I ask a question right there? Certainly, Director Gosh, I go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. The, uh, the, the, the conduit with the red tape on the left appears to be plastic, PVC or some sort. The, those are the same conduits we're seeing on the right that appear to be metallic. Yes, that is correct. They're all um, uh, EMT conduits and that red tape's on top just to keep any dirt or debris from getting in during the construction. Right. So are they plastic or are they metal? Uh, no, they're PVC, correct. Okay, great. So they won't have, all right. Uh, uh, look, that, they look very shiny on that uh, 
uh, being held up. And I was worried that you were, oh, yeah, yeah, I put steel and concrete. That would last yeah. six weeks. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Um, and this photo is uh, was taken this morning, and we're standing on the north side of the site looking south. And you can see the progress. Now that we've gone vertical, you can see the progress on from left to right, tanks one, two, and three, uh, with tank four on the far right-hand side of the screen not yet completed. Um, they've already completed several of the wall pours. Um, they've been able to mitigate any kind of thermal concerns or heating through the heat wave with the water cooling pipes that go through these walls. Um, so it's no news is good news in that regard. Um, and that's all I have for today. Okay, any other questions from the board, Nancy? Steve, would you remind me where M2 is? <laughs> is it um, in the back half of Dos Palmas in that in the school, the, the elementary? Correct. It's it's between um, Dillon and the school and west of um, Bubbling Wells and east of Avenida de Manzana. Okay, I thought so. I just want to make sure. Thanks. Okay, Ivan? Did we have any issues with that recent storm? Any damage or delays from that? Um, no, no storm water made it to the site or through the site um, and any waters that did fall on site, um, they have a couple different um, drainage paths where that can take and it didn't impact anything on site and it didn't create any kind of um, um, issues with the soil being saturated. Um, so it was good news on that front as well. Okay, and overall we're on schedule for everything? Yep, we are still on schedule for everything. Perfect. Thank you. That, that's amazing that there was no water up at my house, what, a mile away or two miles away? We had a, an inch and a half in a few hours. <laughs> it was amazing. It was the hardest rain I've seen in a long time. Robert, any questions? None. Okay. Uh, Director Grusha, any additional questions? Uh, no questions. Thank you uh, very much for the great report and uh, congratulations on the forward speed with this project. And uh, it's coming together very nicely, it seems like. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, moving on to item 13, Critical Services Center and Administration Building Update. I assume that's going to be you as well, Steve. Is that correct? No. No? No? I, actually, it'll be me. Thank Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead, yeah. Brian. Thank you, President Martin, members of the board. Uh, just a quick verbal report. Uh, staff has received a 90% design drawings for our review. Uh, a set of those drawings are currently in the GM's office for anyone that would like to see them today. Uh, we are working with Renewal Clark to develop a review process to ensure the project stays on schedule. Uh, we are also formalizing a meeting summary uh, from our last board workshop where we talked about and exchanged ideas about some of the changes that the board wanted to see. I'm going to put, be putting together a checklist, if you will, to make sure that either all the issues were addressed or reasons why they weren't addressed. So we'll be providing that uh, at a later time. Uh, we are currently on schedule for bidding the project in December, and uh, things are going very well. Any questions from the board? Kent? Robert? Ivan? Mr. Grasha? I have uh, no questions other than my uh, continued comments that I think this is uh, a boondoggle. All right. Um, moving on to the consent agenda. Uh, we have item 14, which is the approval of minutes from the study session on August 11th, 2022, the board meeting from August 15th, 2022, and a special meeting on August 25th, 2022. Uh, be sure and review those minutes and make any corrections or changes uh, during Monday's meeting. Also, item 15, register of demands, uh, register of demands totaling 3274000 $46.88. Um, be sure and review that uh, those documents as well. And uh, we'll vote on that on Monday. Uh, director's reports. Anybody want to do their director's reports today? I have, I have no report. Oh. Okay. All right. No, not today. I didn't have time. Ivan? Sure. Okay, go ahead. I just have the one. So uh, August 22nd to 24th, attended CSDA conference. Um, as always, I think CSDA has some great um, keynote speakers. Uh, these were a bit different, but also very interesting. Um, and then uh, a few of the breakouts that I attended really stood out. And two of those were um, titled Telling Our Organization Story and The Five Steps to Successful Community Support. And uh, both of those breakouts focused really on engagement of our ratepayers. 
And a lot of the things that they were going over, we're starting to implement. So I'm really proud of our staff and everyone involved in getting our ratepayers more engaged. And I think with the regional plant and the new building, hopefully, we have a lot of great opportunities to um, continue that engagement and really show our value that uh, MSD is providing our community. And that's all I have. Okay, very good. <clears throat> um, moving on to, uh, and I'll do mine on Monday as well. Um, moving on to item 17, general manager's report, pardon. Thank you, President Martin. Um, you, I mean, it's actually, again, is always very comprehensive report um, and you can get a really good idea. Most everything is included in there. Uh, there are three items coming up uh, in the future that I wanted to just give you a heads up on. Uh, the first one is that um, I'm going to bring you um, uh, a bid for the repair work at this building. We did get those in and we uh, and I want to run that by you, uh, let you decide whether or how much of this you really want to do. So that'll be on the meeting agenda for uh, next month. Uh, two other items, um, we're required by Sigma to submit annual reports, as you know, and uh, and we this is our second um, uh, alternative plan that's been approved. Um, first one through a bridge document and um, they've, it, they've been quite successful. Those annual reports are quite comprehensive. We have an agreement where we split the cost of that annual report with Coachella Valley Water District and Desert Water Agency. Um, and the group has decided that we, and they proposed that we actually, instead of doing this every year, that we do uh, a five-year agreement to split that cost. And I will bring that to you in the future. We should be seeing that proposal. Okay. Um, and then the last thing that I wanted to mention is that um, and you, we presented to you earlier, and uh, and I want to circle back, as you know, that we um, have been awarded the $68 million grant. However, uh, we do need to uh, process that grant, and we've been looking out. We've presented this to you before, incidentally. Uh, we showed you how what the cash flow would be like, and in place of taking money out of investments, et cetera, uh, we have we went out and um, and got several banks to solicit proposals to uh, provide us with a bridge loan that we, we can put in place to cover the cash flow shortages that we might see. Uh, and I will be bringing that to you as soon as we evaluate those proposals. OK, and that's it. That's all I have. In addition, okay. to any any questions for our general manager? Uh, I have one. Okay, uh, go ahead. The uh, uh, proposals for the bridge loans, did they come with a uh, interest rate attached? Well, I haven't actually seen them myself, and Arturo's not here. To, <coughs> yes, they will. Um, that I can say yes to, but I don't have that information. It'd be short term, though, correct? Oh, yeah, it'll be short term, and they'll be paid off. Yes, okay. Ivan, any questions? No, no. Okay, moving on to the uh, public affairs update. All right, and I'm going to let Marilyn, or Marion, excuse me, not Marilyn, Marion. We did have a Marilyn in that position. Okay, Marion. Good afternoon. Thank you, General Manager Wallam, and, good, and uh, thank you, President Martin and members of the board. I have a PowerPoint. I think I'm doing the wrong screen. Hold on one second. I apologize. I will get this right. I assume you guys keep seeing my outlook, correct? Yeah, it's not staying on the screen. It's, it goes on and then immediately turns off. So Actually, well, the last two times we did see your presentation. You did see my presentation. Yes. Great. I'm going to go ahead and show. try that one more time then. That's perfect. There you go. Thank you. That's my presentation. Perfect. Yes. I apologize for I got a new monitor situation today. Um, so we're going to start off with. 
some of our community involvement. Uh, we again partnered with Lifestream yesterday to hold a successful blood drive. Employees and members of the public joined us as we donated to honor, to honor those who lost their lives for 9-11. In total, we had more than 20 life-saving donations. And as a, I'd like to give a special thanks to everyone who participated and also a quick shout out to Car Carol Morin in our public affairs office who helped coordinate the event. Also last week, members of our board and MSWD participated in the Well Untapped Water Summit. The half day Save Our Water event featured Wade Cro Crowford from the California Secretary of the California Natural Resources Department and Joaquin Estival, chair of the State Water Resources Control Board. Uh, Mission Springs also recently partnered with the Rotary for a student-led interact project to create care packages for homeless of our city. Included in the bags were a variety of items, including a reusable water bottle from MSWD, hand sanitizer, band-aid, sunblock, hat, clean socks, and a few snacks. The first set of bags were distributed last uh, the last week of August. Uh, throughout the month, uh, we've also continued to promote the Low Income Household Water Assistance Program, also known as LIWA, um, on our website, through our social media, and in our bill inserts. Um, we also did a special mailer to all of the MSWD customers that are currently on a payment plan, and we invited them to learn more about how the program um, can be applied to, to the, fund those payments uh, on the back balances. As an agency, we received more than $14,000 from the program since it launched back in June. We are also continuing to promote the progress made on the new regional plant. Um, I have started a new practice follow the Wednesday following each of our board meetings. I've been sharing a social media slideshow video on the construction images that Steve has been sharing with you um, after our meetings. Last month, we also issued a news release promoting the $68 million grant funding from the state. Uh, that release garnered media coverage on KMIR TV, uh, the Aqua newsletter, the public record, and on our so on social media. Um, as most of you probably heard, on Monday, August 29th, an electrical problem at the Red Bud Booster Station caused limited water availability in the Highland Reservoir area. And out of an abundance of caution, MSWD asked 40 residents in the area to conserve and use boiled tap water or boiled water for drinking and cooking purposes as a safety precaution. As part of our communications efforts, the district went door to door. We issued notices to impacted homeowners, and we also offered them free bottled water. We also called affected customers using our IVR system and posted messages and helpful information on our website and social media sites. Once the order was lifted, we did go back door to door again, and we made those same phone calls um, to make sure everybody was as advised. Throughout the event, we made a very concerted effort to keep all of our staff even those outside of our normal uh, public, public uh, those that, that serve the public on the customer service lines, so that they would all know what was going on and that the testing, as the testing was being performed. Um, we also, um, on the portal side, we've been continuing to promote the portal through bill messaging, email blasts, the MSWD website, social media, um, and we are, as we now are reaching about 30% of our registered customers have been registered for the portal, we're enhancing our strategies and adding new additional advertising and outreach opportunities. Uh, this includes paid ads in the Spanish publication El Informador and also uh, an ad in a free guide called Just the Basics, which includes essential information um, for utilities, police, and fire. Both the El Informador and the basic guides are being printed and distributed at locations throughout the city. We are also continuing to remind customers to conserve water and use it efficiently during the drought. We have added a resource page on our website for, home, for homeowners associations that includes information related to the state's ban on non-functional turf. The page includes fact sheets, Q and A's, and a template newsletter story that they can use to help communicate with their residents. We have emailed links to all of these materials to our local DHS HOAs and have offered additional assistance should they need it. In addition, working through our CV Water Counts group, we have also sent an e-blast out to all HOAs in the Valley that is discouraging home, uh, overseeing. We are again working with the Wildland, Wildlands Conservation, Conservation Agency to provide field trips to Mission Creek Preserve to help promote groundwater protection. 
In addition, flyers have been sent to the, all the principals and instructors at each of the schools within our service territory. And we are also offering classroom presentations and tours of the district, district's Horton plant during the coming year. Um, each of the schools also received information on our calendar drawing contest, which promotes groundwater protection and conservation. The deadline for entries is October 3rd. To date, we've received a lot of interest from local residents and we've had a lot of shares on social media. We are also working out the details for an upcoming sponsorship with the Desert, Heights, Desert Hot Springs High School Real Academy once again, and we will be helping them with the video and materials for their project. I will brief all of you on the board um, as I have more details on that. I also wanted to briefly just mention that Mission Springs Water District will celebrate its platinum or its 70th anniversary in February. And to help plan how we are gonna honor this important milestone, the Public Affairs Office is assembling an employee committee to gather ideas and start making plans. We uh, welcome the board feedback and suggestions and we will continue to brief you as our plan becomes more defined. And last, but certainly not least, as we discussed last month, we are switching up our 2022-23 videos to add more humor and entertainment into the mix. This month's video is a short whodunit mystery. And with that, I'll roll the video. Hundreds of gallons of water disappear from homes across Desert Hot Springs every day. Cracking the case can take a matter of minutes with one tool, a bottle of food coloring. Let's approach our prime suspect, the toilet. Remove the tank cover and put a few drops of food coloring in the water. Now it is time to sit back as that food coloring goes to work. Wait about five minutes and check the toilet bowl. If you see food coloring in the water, you caught the guilty party, a leak. In many cases, the rubber toilet flapper needs to be replaced. If you are handy, it is a quick repair. Otherwise, you can always call a plumber. Either way, fixing the leaky toilet will save thousands of gallons of water each month. It's another water mystery solved with MSWD. And that concludes my report for this month. Thank you all for your time. It looked like you were you looked like you were awfully busy during the last this last month. So Thanks, yeah. So Thanks, um, Director Wright. Uh, yes, I was very pleased to see that you started up on the uh, the field trips of Mission Creek. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you very much. Great, great uh, report too. And oh, and, and the, oh, the, the, the old uh, newspaper, really cool. Two forty six to nine. That's what that was the vote to form Desert Hot Springs County Water District of the people at the time. That was what that was. So. Okay, Robert. <clears throat> uh, I just have a question regarding the field trips. You said they are for high school students. Actually, they're offered to all of the all of the grades, but okay. typically it's the younger uh, students who come out and do the preserve as part of their curriculum. However, last year I did take out um, a high school group as well. Okay, that's good. Thank you, Mr. Grasha. Uh, uh, my compliments on the uh, mystery ad. I thought that was wonderful, and it was more wonderful to not see any board members' mugs in the uh, ad. I think that's going to go. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, we didn't want to scare the kids, so, you know. <laughs> Ivan? Yeah, just great job as usual. It looks like you were busy, and thank you for everything you do. Yes, again, I I want to restate that it's good work. A lot of work was accomplished this last month. You did an outstanding, an outstanding job. Anything further from our general manager? That concludes my presentation. Thank okay. you. Okay, all right. Moving on to item 18, uh, district council comments. So we have no closed session today. Okay. And other than that, I don't have any other comments. Okay, moving on to director's comments. Uh, Director Grusha, do you have any final comments? Uh, just to uh, welcome uh, again, uh, uh, Director Griffith, congratulations. It's uh, going to be great to uh, be able to uh, work with you and look forward to uh, uh, your involvement uh, on a broader scale in water uh, throughout the valley. I think you're going to be uh, amazed. I know you, uh, I think uh, you, you have a friend that was is on the CVWD board. I, I may be uh, getting some information crossways there, but uh, uh, it's it's great news and, uh, and uh, well. 
Okay, uh, Ivan. Yeah, uh, thank you to Carol and everyone that helped put together the blood drive. I think having these consistently is really um, a benefit for the community. Each time I've been the last few times, uh, I've seen some of the same faces and um, not just members of our staff, but members of the community and um, just giving the opportunity for people to come out and give blood. I think it's really important. So thank you. Okay. Um... Right, so did you already give your uh, comments? You're fine? Okay. Robert, do you have any final? Uh... Uh, I just want to thank everybody for their compliments. Um, honored to be up here. Um, as with any job, there's always a learning curve. And so uh, I've got some studying to do, but um, I'm excited for um, the next year or so. Okay, great. I do have something. Welcome yeah. to Mission Springs Water District. Yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. you got a unanimous vote. That's kind of hard around here sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I want to echo that on behalf of the board. Uh, your background is uh, is just outstanding and um, your knowledge of what's going on in the community and, um, and, and, and participation in various uh, community events has just been, uh, been remarkable. So uh, welcome aboard. And uh, with that, uh, this meeting is adjourned till Monday.